Hello viewers, and welcome to another episode of K Let's Scope. Before we begin, I highly suggest that you check out our YouTube channel, where we have great content, as well as kscopenews.com and our Instagram and Twitter. And enjoy this episode of K Let's Scope. Thank you. Welcome to the first ever episode of K Let's Scope, Ward Mobile Kaleidoscope's brand new podcast. And today we have... I'm Nick Avicello. I am a senior, and I am the editor, co-editor-in-chief of Kaleidoscope this year. I'm Rebecca Blumenthal, and I'm the co-commentary editor with a specialization in op-eds, and I'm also a senior. Nice. And I am your host, Sofian Siddiqui, of this podcast. So let's get into it. Last school year, in March, um, something interesting happened. Coronavirus came. Very interesting. It was very interesting. I, I agree. It was also very life-changing. That is also true. Definitely. And Kaleidoscope had to adapt for moving from a physical aspect to a more virtual aspect. So what do you think happened? To, like, What exactly happened? How did we adapt as a club? So basically what happened to Kaleidoscope is obviously we all moved online, right? So for editors, that looked like meeting still almost every week and FaceTiming over what we were planning on doing, still planning article ideas, but the content really changed, mm -hmm. which was a big impact on the club because we stopped really doing our general club sections. So all the articles would be focused on COVID-19 as we began work on a print edition for COVID-19, which was also very weird because the whole print was done out of school and really only done by a couple of people. So props to them. They did a great job. <laughs> yeah, they did a great job. Um, and then something else is that we put more um, of a presence on like Instagram and GroupMe and uh, Classroom so that we could keep in touch with all the people in the school, but also predominantly our club. So on Thursdays, we would just send out article ideas, um, keep up the website, all that good stuff. Nice. And Rebecca, you were a staff writer last yeah, year. Yeah, so I actually wasn't on board last year, but from a staff writer perspective, I think that transition was handled really, really surprisingly well. <laughs> um, like, they really kept up with um, providing article ideas and keeping the social media and website active and engaging people. And I, it was really great, actually. Yeah. That's good. Um, so from switching to online, have we as a club adapted and kept any of the changes that we had to make from moving to online? So we're what's called hybrid this year. So predominantly the club is in person, but then we have a Google Meet that's like outside right. for like kids on Thursday who are online. So I think from last year, we're kind of back to business as usual almost besides the obvious like mass, six feet distance, you know, having kids online sort of thing. So maybe one thing we've kind of kept from last year would be we're trying to keep more on the social media as much as we can, at least, trying to keep an emphasis on that. But other than that, I think we're almost back to business as usual. That's good. And Rebecca, do you yeah. have anything to add to that? Yeah, I was going to say, I think in the past, um, Kaleidoscope has not had a very active social media. Like, they post, like, a couple times in a month, and, like, that's it for a while. Mm -hmm. But this year, we have Audrey Glynn, who's our amazing managing yeah, editor. Yeah, Audrey. Shout out to Audrey. Woo! Thank you. She's, like, managing our social media and keeping it really active, and I think it's made a huge difference. Like, this is something that we started because of the pandemic, and... I think it's really cool now. We're engaging um, a lot of the Word Mobile community. Yeah. That's good, yeah. So how do you think that Kaleidoscope handled it? Um, your opinion on like... I think we actually did pretty darn well. I think it was a little chaotic at the beginning, but I think that's fair. I mean, I don't know if anyone in February was like, oh my god, a global pandemic is coming. <laughs> we have to close schools. Yeah. That was a pretty big uh, transition, yeah. to be honest. That... I don't think anyone was really prepared for it, but I think we adapted pretty well to the situation. I think we kept a lot of content out, which was really cool. I'm really happy with how the whole club kind of came together. All the writers came together. The board came together. It was really, I think it was awesome. I think we did a good job. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I so agree. It was really great. I'm part of a few other clubs, and I don't think, I guess K-Scope has uh, more potential for adaptability since we have a website already, 
but it was really, really impressive how everyone came together and kept the club running almost like to full strength. Yeah, that is also true. We kind of did have a little edge with that because we don't need to be in person to run. Like some of the clubs, you know, like they revolve around like service or they revolve around like meetings. Exactly. Whereas we can kind of go without, which is nice, especially if we go online again this year. Mm -hmm. I think we'll do something similar with a few changes here and there. But I think we were we were kind of lucky with that, to be honest. But I still think we did a pretty good job. Yeah. So something else that happened last year was that we still had the opportunity to apply for leadership positions for this school year and so we all had to submit our applications online this year as we did in the past I think also yeah um but something with the applications is I felt like I applied in 10th grade too for a position junior year I felt like we had a little bit more guidance with the application in that year in terms of like we had more ability to ask and reach out which I guess we did this year, but obviously it's not the same in person as it is out exactly, of person. Exactly, yeah. There's always a difference so, in that yeah. aspect. Yeah. But how did it feel when you guys um, found out that you had positions on the board? Oh my god, I was so excited. I like didn't see that they made the announcement until Nikki texted me and he was like, commentary editor! And I was like, oh my gosh! I had I really did not expect it because there were so many, um like we were juniors last year, there were so many juniors that were like super involved in Kaleidoscope. And I had just joined Kaleidoscope junior year. Even though like I was pretty involved, like I wrote a lot of articles that year, like I thought there's no way I could be an editor if I wasn't even like in the club sophomore year. Uh -huh. So I was so excited. It That's was really good. It was awesome. And how does it feel to be a co editor in chief? Well, I was really excited because when they told me I so actually they FaceTimed me and Neil to be to like tell us, but I kind of um might have been in an Xbox game and missed that. <laughs> uh, FaceTime, and then I saw they FaceTime, and I was like, "Oh God, what the heck is this?" So then I FaceTimed them back, and then they told me, and I was like, "Oh my God!" I sh was shaking, and then I ran upstairs, and I was like, "Oh my God, I got it!" And then oh. that was it. So yeah, I was really excited. Um, happy to be part of the board again this year. Really happy with everyone who's on the board. Really good yeah. year, good board. Really yeah. excited. Yeah. I love our board this year. I Me feel too. like everybody's just best friends, and it's so fun <laughs> to hang out with everybody. I I love it so much. Oh Except for Neil. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, love you, Neil. <laughs> Hi, Neil. <laughs> so how does it feel to be a part of the Kaleidoscope board? Like, your duties-wise, like, teamwork, unity? So I really, I like it. I think it's really cool. I really like K-Scope. Happy to be on the board. Um, I think this year especially, I think it's really cool to be, like, in the club, see how it's progressed since 10th grade to now. I mean, that's three years difference. So it's kind of cool to see the progression especially um and i really love just you know having relationships with everybody seeing everybody each week being involved is really nice i don't know i just like every part of it to be honest that's good <laughs> yeah i agree it's so much fun I, especially this club just like the people in it the board and like the whole club in general everybody is just so excited to be there and like eager to contribute and it just makes for like a really fun environment and i'm so happy to be a part of it, it really i think a lot of that comes from passion too for journalism yeah. Absolutely. And when you have passionate students in the club then you also are going to have a really good experience at the club so yeah. that's really good yeah so what does kaleidoscope mean to you i don't know it's kind <laughs> of oh my god i hate to be this person but especially with like the board it's kind of like a second family yeah. <laughs> like rebecca said we're all best friends i think that's totally true i hope <laughs> Nope. Nemo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but um, I think that K-Scope is really the one club. Well, yeah, definitely like the one club, to be honest. <laughs> I've definitely like really connected with, honestly. Like, I was on the middle school newspaper for a couple of years, kind of. So like, was I. Yeah. Like, nothing as big as now. I definitely, going on to K-Scope was definitely kind of a... Big, big game changer for me. I didn't realize how much I really liked journalism until I got in the club. So that's something that was really interesting, really exciting. And I also got to meet a lot of new people, which I think is really cool. Yeah. I was literally like just writing a college essay on this. Like I was new to the district in ninth grade. Yeah. And so like, I don't know, just coming in, I was really quiet and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like want to voice my opinions on anything or every, at all. Like I kind of just like, and now you're an editor. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so 
<laughs> yeah, and so I feel like it's as cliche as it sounds, K-Scope really gave me a voice. Like my first article that I ever wrote for Kaleidoscope was about Chanel Miller, who was the sexual assault survivor that wrote a memoir called Know My Name. And she was like reclaiming her story. And I think that kind of like applies to kaleidoscope for me not the sexual assault not though. the sexual assault no no oh, let's gosh. make that clear right now <laughs> yeah, no no oh gosh no um it just <laughs> kaleidoscope just like helped me find my voice and find people that really empowered me and just like an environment that made me not afraid to express my opinions and be outspoken and advocate for what i believe in and so now as op-ed editor it's really cool to like help empower other people to express their opinions as well that's nice. That's really nice. <laughs> really good. Um, it's really good. <laughs> uh, uh, so how are you going to use journalism in the future, do you think? Do you think that like the skills that you learned from Kaleidoscope are going to be applied um, in the future? Well, I think even if I don't go into journalism as like my major or career choice, I think that I'm definitely going to be using a lot of the skills I learned. I mean, I know being on the board, I've definitely got a better at public speaking in terms of going in front of people at meetings and talking. I also think in terms of like, I've had to conduct interviews with people I, I haven't known. So I think that's definitely also made me a little bit more confident in terms of like presenting myself, my ideas, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Exactly. And even just in terms of like writing, I think some facets of journalism can be applied anywhere. Like it's, it's usually always better to keep things concise and strong. And I think that journalism kind of um, like, bangs that point in. So I think I'm definitely going to be able to use it wherever I go in my life. I think that uh, journalism is also something that you're going to see throughout your life. So it's important to also know how to look at news and be able to discern if it's good or not in terms of like, is there a bias here? Do I really trust what this person is saying? Always questioning things. I think that, again, I'm going to be using it everywhere. I think it's definitely beneficial for me in my life. No matter what you do, I think that being a part of a newspaper and getting yourself involved with journalism is a good idea no matter what. Rebecca, yeah. anything to add to that? Mickey said it better than anyone could. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. It applies to literally everything. They're, they're, everything that you learn from journalism, like the advocacy and assertiveness and like finding your voice and learning how to analyze media and everything, it's going to apply to everything. I think specifically, like for me, especially public speaking wise, mm -hmm. like, it's such an important skill to have to be able to express your opinions and like mm -hmm. your ideas to other people effectively. Yeah. And I didn't really have that for a long time. And I was wondering like where like I kind of learned that. And I think it came from K-Scope as well. Yeah. Yeah, which is something that I never expected to be honest. I mean, you're going to a writing club. You're not going exactly. to a, well, a writing, video, you know. Yeah, yeah. Really, all we're, we're all journalism. So if you're interested, <laughs> come along. But predominantly a writing club, which is what most... Uh, members are here for right so i think that that was something unexpected that i was really happy to kind of develop with my time here so anything in the future from kaleidoscope that we should be looking forward to this podcast this podcast yeah. it's really true it's really uh, every week new episode by the yeah. way so stay tuned yeah um and if you're interested oh yeah and if you're interested in joining our podcast or if you have anyone interested uh, interesting that would like to join our podcast please contact us at our instagram and our dms yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, so in other terms of like things to look out for from K-Scope is this year it's a little different. We're going to be doing two print editions, but they're going to be big. So they're going to be really exciting. They're going to be really mind-blowing, really beautiful, <laughs> oh, really yeah. powerful. They're going to be great. So keep an eye out for those, okay? They're going to be really good this year. Yeah. They're going to be really good. And if anybody's interested in writing or video or, like, podcast or social media or graphic design or anything, like, come join us. We'd be happy to have you. Yeah, especially graphic design-wise. <laughs> yeah. Like, last year, the paper was just was amazing because we had yeah, so beautiful. many talented graphic designers. And now this year, we still have a lot, but it would obviously be great to have, what, you have anything uh, I, we, we, we could use more. Yeah, we could use more. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah, in order to make the paper be look beautiful, like, we need graphic designers because, yeah. you know, that's the whole graphic aspect of it. Yeah. Anything else in the future? Any, like, any sneak peeks that we can get, any, maybe? Any new... I mean, honestly, from last year, 
especially with COVID, we had some ambitious plans. We're still trying to get them done, but one of these is the podcast, by the way. <laughs> so definitely keep an eye out for that. But yeah. <laughs> um, with COVID, it's a little bit hard, and I don't want to give too much away with right. what's coming this year. Yeah. Um, I already said a lot about the print, so that is mm-hmm. one of the things to definitely keep an eye out for. It's going to be really, I think it's going to be really interesting, really exciting. Um, Rebecca, do you think there's anything? Yeah, I think the print edition is going to be a pretty big thing. Yes. We put a lot of time in it so far, and there's a lot more to come. I really like the theme for it. I think it's going to be really good. Yeah, so we'll find out when it comes out, I guess, right? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, it's another thing that we kind of like overlooked was our website and how beautiful it looks right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, we love had it. to completely redesign that website. Yeah, so... We put a good amount of time into that in terms of we wanted to give it um, a journalism look, but also more of like a modern, I guess, kind of look, like more sleek than it was. Um, So I would definitely go check that out. Again, it's kscopenews.com. We have a lot of great content out right there on there right now. We have so many writers participating this year. It's really amazing. And I would definitely go check it out, even if to just go look at the site, get yourself acclimated with it. It's it's really cool. It's really, it's amazing, to be honest. I agree. I think it's really important to have a website, too. And also, from that website, you could find all the links to our socials and also our YouTube, which is where this podcast is going to be. Yeah, if you look in the description, you'll be able to find our Instagram, website, and also Twitter. Ooh. And Facebook, I think, too. Uh, I don't know. Nah. I don't think we're using Facebook we too Facebook. much this year, to be honest. Yes, fair. <laughs> yeah, but keep an eye out on the YouTube also, actually. That is something to look Our out YouTube for. is doing yeah. phenomenal right now. In yeah. fact, we just dropped something yesterday, yes. right? Yesterday mm-hmm. night. Class of 2023 First Impressions. It's really yeah. great. 2023. 2023. So, yeah, keep an eye out on the YouTube. We're going to have a lot of content out this year, a lot of mm-hmm. um, interesting content. Especially if we go home, we want to be able to keep in contact with all you guys. So we're going to be adapting ourselves there, too. Oh, so, yeah. We should talk about that a little bit. What ha- like, okay. uh, what do you guys have in plan for in so, case you know, we end up going back to virtual? Completely? Yeah, so if we go back to virtual, we're going to kind of take the model of what we did in the spring with some more communication between us and the members okay. and also the community. So what we are planning on doing is to put a heavy emphasis. We put a lot of emphasis on um, GroupMe last year, which is definitely a good resource. But we want to put more on Classroom as well. So we want to be able to get videos out to our members and also the community on Instagram, YouTube, stuff like that. So that it's more personal, I guess you could say, Mm -hmm. in terms of the contact that we are having. And we could also put a lot more uh, info into those videos in a short amount of time as opposed to typing it out. Um, So that is definitely one change. Another change would be, if we go home, how I said with getting more videos out, we're going to be adapting kind of like series, so to speak of like at home like mini like film sort of things do you think it's like it would be more sorry but do you think it'd be more like workshop types or do you think it'll be more so the ones that we'd be posting to classroom would be more like workshops like here's how we're going to be doing things here's how to write this right. you know stuff like that uh-huh. on our classroom but then onto like youtube and instagram we'd post things like here's what i do in a day here's some ideas for studying during quarantine like stuff like that or it's more like kind of like little features i guess you could say mm-hmm where it's like a day in the life or something like that, you know? That'd be nice. Things like that to kind of just keep up, you know, a positive attitude, keep in contact with friends, stuff like that. Um, Not anything too serious, more relaxed in that regard. Um, And then if we went online, we'd still be doing a lot on the website like we did last year. Mm -hmm. Um, But this year, we probably wouldn't switch entirely to COVID coverage again exactly yeah we would keep up with our regular content in addition with covid content of course so that would definitely be a change from last year in terms of coverage um but other than that i think that's pretty much what we're planning on right now Mm -hmm. still meeting twice a week um holding uh google meets for students at home to come in on thursdays and still meet with us right that sort of thing so that would be our plan Oh, one thing I kind of wanted to talk about was, Rebecca, you're at school. I am time. at school. And I'm Nikki, at home. Yeah, you're at home. And I'm also at home full time. Yeah. So you want to talk about like your experiences and what you feel about yeah. how or how do you feel about Ward Mobile, um, I guess, their approach to letting kids in. 
Yeah, well, I guess, obviously, I was pretty surprised at first when I found out that they were planning to do full-time, in-person, with just the option of remote. I feel like pretty much every other school I'd seen had done um, hybrid learning or mm-hmm. full remote or something like that. But that said, I actually think they did a pretty okay job of, um, like changing the norm and like enforcing masks and social distancing and stuff there's obviously like a lot more they could have been doing but the circumstances that they're in i think it was pretty okay <laughs> well i would have to disagree with you Ooh. to be honest i don't want to go and bash the, for the job level. that they did yeah but i think i was actually in person and I, you you were too yeah i was I also was, in person i was in person for only the first two days of school And I have to tell you, when I went in, there was no social distancing. There were masks off everywhere. And I think it's kind of, I don't, I don't understand what the role of the 10 minute mask breaks during each class are. (laughs) That is not safe. I don't know who cleared that and why, but unless you have a medical condition, there's no reason you should do that. And if you have that condition, you probably shouldn't be in school anyways. (laughs) Fair. So, I mean, I don't. That was one of the reasons why I ended up going online. Aside from that, this isn't really like the school's fault. This is, I didn't have a lunch and I wasn't going to like be leaving all my like classes throughout the day to go, especially because they didn't let me go during gym. Is that not the weirdest thing? Anyways, but so I went out for that too. But again, that's not really their fault. That's just, I was annoyed about that, but I don't think it was safe at all. I mean, you could see... (laughs) I th- it seems to me like they're trying better now with like clearing the hallways a bit and giving out the plexiglass but is anyone even using that no they are not oh yeah, yeah i actually had a question about the plexiglass yeah. so people what, what was the um... so they handed it out um one day and everyone had to take one and take it home um my history teacher said that it was like just in case they decided to mandate it everyone needed to have one but like after the day that everybody took it home i haven't seen a single person use it yeah and there was actually a little bit of debate with that one of our staff writers actually wrote an article like considering the plexiglass which i think was really interesting you should go and check it out yeah um and they talked about how it could actually be like kind of like a uh the opposite effect like yeah, it's just like, another surface for germs to yeah, go on thank you thank you yeah <laughs> so i found that to be kind of interesting and that's i think that's a good point also yeah, yeah. that is actually very true um mm. something else in terms of like the reopening experience that i think mm. was i think it's pretty smart that they restructured the day a little bit in terms of like the times that they're starting now because i think even like when I was in school for the two days I was, to be honest, it wasn't that much. But, like, I did notice that, like, at the end of the day, like, I wasn't getting home until, like, 2.30 to 2.45 sometimes, which is kind of ridiculous because I live, like, five to ten minutes away yeah. from the school. So I think that that was smart in terms of I didn't back realize that was, then. like, a COVID issue, like, how all the traffic and stuff mm-hmm. was related. Because I think a lot more people are picking up their kids this year and yeah. dropping them off. Mm-hmm. So... I think that's probably why. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm assuming the same amount of seniors are driving, but who knows? Maybe that's an issue too. Maybe. I have no idea. Um, yeah. oh, that senior parking lot. The yeah. Senior parking lot. Oh <laughs> my god. Have some concerns about that. Ooh, uh, some concerns. I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but um, actually, I will. <laughs> no, like there's a, the long line and like many times there's people like throwing coins at each other from their driver's seats it's so scary when i'm like right behind them in my car like if that hits my windshield like i'm so screwed and then one time this guy like parked in the middle of the line even though it was moving and he got out and like went into his trunk and took out a golf club and started like running up to people and like going like this to them oh oh my god wow yeah. Another thing was the, <laughs> the windshield wipers. Someone put all of them. Oh, in. yeah. People, like, walk down the line and lift up people's windshield wipers. Which is a lot of work. Yeah. It's dedication, I guess. It's dedication in the wrong way. <laughs> but, yeah, back to, like, how the school is handling it. I, Yeah, I definitely see your point. Like, some kids are not super cooperative. I just think in general, like, if they had to make it full in person, then they did the best that they could with that situation i definitely think that they should not have done full in person but given that they did they tried (laughs) so here's my question um our school right now is offering um outdoor dining Mm -hmm. so how many people 
actually use that opportunity. Actually, I think it's a large number of people. I myself have never gone into the cafeteria because I'm scared for my life. Yeah. But um, sense. so I eat outside except for when it's like really gross out. When I like eat in one of the hallways or something like that, like the designated hallways. Um, <laughs> and there's actually a lot of people. Sometimes it's hard to find seats, but then we do. The only thing is that um, like people don't really stick to where the tables are set up. Like they kind of mm -hmm. scooch closer to each other, and then the security guard yells at them, and then the security guy leaves, and they scooch back next to each other. So there's definitely work that still needs to be done, but I think. Yeah. But to a large extent, it's just also you can't control what people exactly yeah do all the time right which and that's really sad yeah not no, I don't mean like that you can't control <laughs> them that people won't cooperate is what exactly. I'm saying yeah. is really yeah. sad I mean like we're not five years old guys like this is a pandemic people are gonna yeah. die if you're not safe like I don't want to be morbid but it's true exactly and that speaks to like a larger issue it's not just word novel like mm -hmm. in the country in general there's people that are just prioritizing their own like personal freedoms at the expense of other people like yeah you have the constitutional right to not wear a mask but do you really want to be that person mm -hmm. yeah know. that's a big debate in our country right now too speaking of that debates we're gonna have a couple of debates this year or hopefully yeah. a lot i think that's a really cool idea to like invite word novel students who are very passionate about certain things yeah to voice their, to voice their opinions yeah. yeah and that'd be interesting i know that um sam kim who right now goes to cornell university <laughs> He used to have a polychat, which was his podcast. Um, I don't know if it was connected to Kaleidoscope, but he used to have debates, and I thought they were very interesting. So I'm hoping to bring that sort of aspect back. And we love you, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> so I think if anybody who listened or watched has any ideas for anything they want us to do or any debate ideas that they would maybe want to be a part of, comment below or let us know. Yeah. You know? Yeah, We'd we have a comment section. Thank you guys for joining me today. That was really nice. We had a really good discussion Thanks about it. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you're you. welcome. I really appreciate it. First episode of K Let's Go. Woo! And thankfully, yeah, it went successfully. Um, yeah. And we're going to be on all major platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Yeah. So tell your friends about this podcast, and hopefully, you know, we can, we're able to reach the bigger Three Village community. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah, thanks, yeah thank guys. you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.